Child stars have kind of become a commonplace in our society. I mean, pretty much all of our favorite childhood shows tended to have people who were child stars. And actually, this goes all the way back to 1885 with the technically first child star who's Ellis Leslie. And as time went on, it just seems like the child stardom just became worse and worse. Because big corporations started thinking, oh look, I can make loads of money off this child and pay them basically nothing. Now, I have mentioned in previous videos before, you know, talking about Disney and Nickelodeon where they basically groom children into becoming child pop stars and even try to push them into music careers and different things just so they can make as much money as physically possible off of them. And for some reason, a lot of people don't really think about or just don't want to think about how much abuse goes into this. I mean, parents forcing their children at the age of two to just become a child star when their kids haven't even had the chance to enjoy their childhood. Which leads to conservatorships, you know, like the whole Britney Spears situation where parents control the child's money even into adulthood. There's so many instances of forcing child actors to do sexually suggestive things and not to mention the insane amounts of SA. Now we do get little bits and pieces of how Hollywood treats their child stars, but things that we don't know are so far beyond what we could actually even imagine. It's so sad and depressing and just dark to think that some of these child stars who we've grown up to love and watch all these different shows, turns out they're actually just dealing with terrible things in their real life. Lately, we definitely have been seeing child actors uh, speak out more and more about the abuse that they dealt with as a child, but you know, most people kind of overlook it because you know, they're celebrities, you know, you don't have to care about celebrities, they're not people. But I'm pretty certain we can all agree that there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. Taking the innocence of a child, completely ripping away their childhood and forcing them into the spotlight of millions. And then when you are done milking as much money as physically possible, you just dump them to the side of the road and let them fend for themselves with little to no money. It's almost as if Disney and Nickelodeon and obviously other companies kind of just raise content farms of humans in a way because they point at a baby and they're like, you know what, you, you're going to be milked for your entire life. And what's even more depressing about this, the thing that really uh, rubs me and should rub more people the wrong way is the fact that after they are dropped by their companies, Disney, Nickelodeon, or whatever they're with, after us growing up with them and loving the characters that they played and all those different things, whenever they have their downfall, everyone is just there to laugh at them. Not really ever considering what trauma they went through or what abuse they went through or why they even had a downfall at all. No one ever really cares. They just kind of want to laugh at the fact that, oh, they got a DUI. Oh, they shaved their head. And none of us are even paying attention to what's actually going on. So I just want to talk about a few examples of the depressing and disturbing nature of child stardom and how I feel like people overlook what's actually going on and tend to just laugh at their pain when we don't really understand. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Upside is a cashback app that enables people to get more value from their purchases and improves the profitability of local businesses as well. All you have to do is open the app, claim the offer, say it's for maybe gas, food, or groceries, and check in at the business of your choice that you're going to get the deal from, you choose which card to pay, and then boom, you get your money back and you get your savings. The cash then appears inside your Upside account. And at any time, you could get cash out, you can go to the bank, you can use PayPal, you could even do gift cards. It's such a simple app to use, it's almost criminal that not many people are using it just for the free money. So I highly recommend that you guys use this, especially in the, these inflation times. It's such an easy app to use, and there really is no downfall with using this app at all. And me personally, I've been using it before every time I go out to get gas or maybe even to get groceries, because I mean, with how times are now, yeah, saving a little bit of money is nice. So if you guys want to find yourself some savings in these interesting times, get yourself the Upside app and make sure to use the promo code BionicPig. And you can get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of anything $10 or more. Do it. The first one I want to talk about is kind of like the first one that really brought a lot of people's attention to it, and that is, of course, Shirley Temple. Now, this one is really dark. Some of the most disgusting examples of famous children getting abused in this story. The child that was meant to portray innocence and happiness on screen 
while behind the scenes suffering from manipulation, abuse, and borderline torture. Shirley's family was dealing with hard times around the time that she was born, barely staying afloat at it was the peak of the Great Depression. So naturally, the moment that Shirley could even walk was the moment that they decided to do everything in their power to make Shirley a famous child star. Instead of finding ways for them to make money, they thought they could just make money off of their child, you know, a, a normal thing to do. And to say that it worked would be an understatement. Now, this is obviously a classic case of parents, you know, trying to live their dreams so their child as her mom wanted to be a famous dancer. So they actually used whatever money they had left and just gambled on Shirley, which you could see in a way as like a good thing for the parent being like, oh, you trust your child that much or you believe in your child that much. Some people would look at it that way, but it really isn't like that. They put her in acting, dancing, and singing classes, everything you could think of. Which, yeah, again, doesn't sound terrible, but you gotta realize that it wasn't the fact that they were banking on her talents. It was more of the fact that they were just hoping that she would be successful to make them money. Basically, she was just a dancing and singing dollar sign in their eyes. Eventually, she landed a contract with educational pictures and starred in shows such as Baby Burlesques, Glad Rags to Riches, Kid in Africa, and many others. It's a series of eight shorts that satirize major motion pictures, film stars, celebrities, and current events. And in these are often, I will say often, sexually suggestive one on reelers where children mimic adults. They dress in adult costumes, uh, wear diapers fastened with large safety pins, and for the short called War Babies, Temple played the part of a sex worker named Charmaine. Yes, a baby playing uh, the role of a sex worker. There is even a portion of the show where she actually exchanged kisses for lollipops. These are literally three-year-olds we're talking about here. Which sure, way back then, uh, people are obviously not going to be considered considering this in any sexual manner. It's just innocent fun, you know, back then that's how they viewed it. And to make things even worse, the working conditions behind all of this were so ridiculous, especially for a child that's three. See, how child stardom works in these big corporations is they obviously realize this person is not gonna be a child forever. So they end up pushing so much work onto these children before they come of age so they can farm as much money as possible. That means there were films shot in a matter of days uh, there was little to no room for mistakes. And to make things even more messed up, apparently if she ever messed up or made mistakes, she was forced to sit in the punishment box, which is a very dark name for anything that is for a child. And whatever you guys think of the punishment box is, it's probably not going to be what I'm about to say. The punishment box was a dark, tiny room containing a block of ice. Like who, who even comes up with that type of punishment? Ah, uh, sorry, three-year-old, you messed up your line. Go sit on a block of ice. Shirley actually admitted later on in her life that she had many reoccurring nightmares of that room, which obviously I feel like anyone would. And things did not get easier as she grew up and, and time went on. Uh, she dealt with constant sexual predators, which you can imagine from the different uh, child sexualized roles that she played. She was regularly groped, threatened, and terrorized by men. At the age of 12, after singing with MGM, a producer named Arthur Freed actually invited her to a private meeting only to expose himself to her and say, I have something made just for you. Oh, God. And after she didn't respond and kind of just laughed nervously, he ended up kicking her out of his office. There was also another instance where this big executive tried to get her to have sex with him, and her response was obviously no. And his response is, sex is like a glass of water. You get thirsty, you drink, you want sex, you have it. And here is actually an excerpt from Shirley Temple's biography that goes into a little bit more detail of this. We were standing a pace apart, eyeball to eyeball, and one swift movement he opened his trousers and with a sudden reach encircled me with one arm. I could feel his other hand groping to lift my shirt. Hard on the heels of the wizard, this new assault seemed unreal, but little could I do but thrust my knee right upward into his groin. Pain, disgust, and hate flickered across his face, but I felt no mercy. More and more, the adult movie business seemed populated with a bunch of copulating tomcats. Also, another instance. Yes, there, there's many instances of this. Uh, there was a famous writer who was writing some very weird stuff to her when she was eight 
years old. Graham Greene apparently wrote that uh, her neat and well-developed rump twisted in the tap dance. And he even went on to write more and more disgusting things about her with no one seeming to care about it. I, I guess no one really minded. I mean, he was like a famous writer, but I guess no one cared. Especially her parents, by the way. You know all of these things I listed? Yeah, her parents didn't give a shit. You, you know what, you know, let's talk about her parents. Let's talk about her parents real quick, shall we? I mean, because I mean, look at all these disgusting situations. There's no way her parents wouldn't say something, right? Well, her parents are kind of just uh, taking all of her money. That's all they're doing. So there's actually this uh, thing that happens whenever there's a child actor when it comes to money. Because let's be real, uh, you know, you can't trust a three-year-old with oh, shit loads of money. So what they do is set up a child trust fund. Uh, I don't know if they still do this, but at least that's what they did then. While the parents receive a separate payment of this, uh, they put other money into this savings account, sort of, so whenever the child becomes of age, they're allowed to go into that bank account and take the money. Now, in most of these cases, the trust fund that the child gets ends up being way more money than the parents were getting. So whenever Temple got into the point of being able to access that trust fund, that $3.2 million that were supposed to be in there was gone. Turns out there's only a whopping 44,000 left. Her father never placed her earnings in a trust fund. Instead, he pocketed all of the money. Because let's be real, that's kind of what her parents wanted to do in the first place, right? They put their daughter through hell, grown men assaulting or groping her and torturing her. But at the end of the day, at least they made some fat stacks, am I right? I feel like that's really what it comes down to in many of these cases. It's just parents selling their child's soul to Disney and then making a lot of money. I mean, there are so many situations even happening now where with all the conservative ship stuff that's going on, you gotta realize that most of the time when a child becomes a child star, it wasn't their choice, it was their parents. But anyway, Shirley Temple ended up marrying at the age of 17. Now, obviously this does sound like it would be a good thing on the surface, right? You know, she got married, someone to like, uh, you know, keep the creeps away from her, but no. Turns out it was just the opposite. Shit just got worse for her because the person she married turned out to be a raging alcoholic and a physical and emotional abuser. I feel like this is just a common thing that happens to abuse victims. They end up uh, marrying into another abuse situation because they just feel like that is just what's supposed to happen. Some would consider this just self-sabotage. You know, when someone's used to believing that is just how life is, they end up getting themselves into that same situation because that's just what they think life is. Now let's talk a little bit about the aftermath, shall we? You know, when did they drop her? When did they throw her to the curb? The moment she hit 17 and started losing that golden hair, she literally just faded into irrelevancy. They stopped making deals with her. They stopped making movies and shows with her. They literally just said, oh, yep, you're not a child anymore. Get out of here. Oh, what? You hit puberty? Ew. We like them young. Get out of here, you puberty weirdo. We like them, we like them prepubescent. You know? So in 1950, she ended up retiring from films and married a man named Charles Black, and they lasted 55 years until Temple died in 2005. She went through the fire, but she came out stronger than ever. Now, this is not the case for a lot of other child actors. A lot of other child actors who go through the fire like this don't come out strong. Let's talk about something that kind of came up recently, a case that doesn't necessarily have to do with the fame and the child stardom, more has to do with the aftermath. So let's move a little bit further into the future and talk about Peter Pan. Now, the reason I'm going to talk about this one specifically is because of a recent movie that came out. I actually reviewed this movie, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Now, why am I talking about this movie of all things? Well, in this movie, there is a grown Peter Pan and he is actually the villain of this movie and his motivations are eerily similar to the story of the original actor who played Peter Pan. To the point that a lot of people are pretty upset behind it because it kind of seems like Disney is mocking this actor. And after hearing the story of the actor who played Peter Pan, I now completely understand why this is an issue. Bobby Driscoll was discovered by complete chance when he was getting a haircut at five years old. His barber randomly just said, hey, you should be in movies. I don't really know like the context of that. I guess it's just like, 
popped up somewhere. So this barber apparently had connections to an agent and he actually hooked Bobby Driscoll up with this agent. So his agent gave him a part and from there it kind of just took off. He ended up playing in many different movies but it wasn't until nine years old that he really took off in the movie, the controversial movie, Song of the South. And for those who don't know why it's controversial, it, it, it's just got a lot of racial stereotypes and, and you know jokes about slavery that Disney does not have a good past. That's all I'll say. This is actually the movie that birthed that zippity doo dah song that pretty much everyone knows. But regardless of the context of that movie, this boosted him into stardom. Bobby Driscoll became a household name basically overnight, leading him to become the original voice actor of the iconic character Peter Pan. It even received him the Juvenile Academy Award in 1950. However, the many years of him playing in many different movies came to a screeching halt whenever you guessed it, he reached 17. Again, Disney's literally saying, oh, what's that? You hit puberty? Ew, we like him younger, get out. But basically he hit puberty, his voice changed, you know, he started getting acne, puberty stuff. And for those who watched the Chip and Dale movie, this is literally verbatim what Peter Pan talked about in the original movie. In Chip and Dale, they tossed Peter Pan to the side because his voice dropped because he started getting acne, and basically just because he was getting older. And whereas some child actors get the luxury of just leaving studios, Driscoll was literally just dropped from everything in Hollywood, thrown out like trash. They wouldn't give him a job anywhere. Howard Hughes is actually the one who kind of kicked him out. He even stated that he hates Bobby Driscoll and he hates child actors. What the heck? And this is where the whole getting raised as a child actor and then getting thrust out into the real world, you know, really rears his head. The Driscoll left his parents' house at 16, but he didn't have any idea where to go. I mean, if you grow up as a child star, living that specific life every single day where you always have things to do, you're always told what to do. You're never really taught how to be an adult. So from that and then throwing him out into the streets just what are you supposed to do? And not only that, but being a child actor, it's lonely. You don't get to play with other kids. You don't even get like much social interaction. You get to talk to a lot of adults, but not to many children. You don't get to go to a regular school. There's so many things that come to it. So Driscoll actually tried college, but it didn't work out. He tried to get jobs, but it ended up falling through. And worst of all, he ended up falling into heroin, which tends to happen a lot with child actors who are kind of just dumped at the side they end up falling into drugs. And over time, the media and us as humans automatically just demonize this behavior. Oh, what, drugs? Ew, disgusting, you must be a horrible human. These children, they were raised in Hollywood. What happens in Hollywood? What, a, what do adults do in the Hollywood world? Drugs, and lots of them. It's pretty common. And I'm not gonna lie, Bobby Driscoll probably grew up around drugs, seeing his executives do drugs and other things like that. And just to make matters worse, just like I said before, the media capitalizes off of this. You know, now it's starting to make a lot more sense. You know, it could be conspiratorial here, but you know, kids were meant to be content farms at a very young age. Suck out all the content you can before they hit puberty. Then when they hit puberty, other big companies farm money as well at their downfall. Everyone benefits from this farm animal. They're basically treating these actors as farm animals. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, some child stars end up making it out fine out of drug addiction and, and different things like that. However, that's not the case for Bobby Driscoll, is it? On March 30th, 1968, two children were playing. They stumbled upon an abandoned building and thought it to be a fun idea to go check out what's inside. But what they found were beer bottles, religious handouts, and in the center was a lifeless man. He had no form of identification on him and no one came forward to claim his body. So he was marked as an unknown and was buried in an unmarked grave. And for two whole years, two years, Famous child star known all over the country. Two years, no one came to claim him. Until a woman named Isabel came forward after a year of posting missing person articles in the paper claimed him to be her son. This man who died was Bobby Driscoll. Apparently Driscoll's fans weren't even aware that he died until seven years after his death. So how does someone go from a household name playing in two of the biggest productions in America at the time to an unnamed dead man 
from overuse of heroin. So this is exactly why everyone was so upset about the joke in Chip and Dale referencing the dead actor who was tossed to the side by Disney like trash and forced to live on his own without any prior experience to life or social environments and with a heavy drug problem. I have one more child actor story I want to talk about. Now this one's recent. Yeah, I wanted a little bit of everywhere. You know what I mean? Lately, child actors have really come forward more and more about the abuse they deal with on a daily basis. Now, one of these child stars that did become a ginormous laughing stock on the entire internet is Orlando Brown. Now, if you don't know Orlando Brown, you probably know him from the show That's So Raven. Now, a lot of you have probably heard or seen a little bit of his insanity, and his story lines up pretty close to all of the child actors I've talked about so far. For most of his childhood, Orlando Brown was very, very successful. He was casted in a slew of popular shows and movies like Major Pain, The Proud Family, Family Matters, and of course, a show we all know and love, That's So Raven. I feel like his story is very similar to a lot of child stars of more recent years, including people like Amanda Bynes. And as where some child stars get out of this horror story and move on with their lives, lives to get better, whereas, you know, some people like Orlando Brown end up falling down the path of drugs. Now, what started the whole downfall of Orlando Brown is none other than the power of the devil's lettuce. Seriously. And this is also what spiraled Amanda Bynes as well. I know a lot of you are probably saying, oh yeah, it's marijuana, gateway drug. You start marijuana, you keep going heavier and heavier. But that's not necessarily all there is to it. The Disney has this weird obsession with having a pristine slate. You know, if you get caught with anything, it's gonzo. You know, you don't get three strikes, you get one and you're out. And that's what happened with Orlando Brown. After it was released that he was caught with the devil's lettuce, Disney cut ties with Orlando Brown. Which just like the Driscoll case, you know, you don't really realize how hard that can be. You know, you're working harder than any child should have to, barely getting sleep, forced to eat less just to keep up appearances. I mean, you know, just like I've said many times, they're your livestock. And on top of everything else, you aren't really making much money. And in many cases, just like before, the parents are taking most of it. So just because of a little bit of danky stanky, Orlando Brown was cut from Disney. And it was cold turkey cut. And then after a while, things just got worse and worse for him. There was a time after Disney where Orlando tried uh, very hard to make music, but it did seem like you know, everything kept getting worse and worse. It really started going downhill after a few DUIs. Then he started falling into a pit of delusion and drugs, getting caught with meth, getting arrested multiple times, and gradually his mental sanity was kind of just falling apart. He really started to gain notoriety from his crazy Instagram posts and interviews, and his famous clip of him talking about how he was dating Raven and his uh, weird uh, response to that. There were even moments where he was saying that he was Michael Jackson's son and even started calling out rappers saying that they slept with children and really harsh allegations. There was even a time where he went on Dr. Phil to get help and didn't even remember his own child's name. He started saying many outlandish things and he started accusing actors, musicians, and other people of doing just terrible things. And it starts to be a question of, you know, is he telling the truth of these things? Like maybe this is some of the stuff he saw when he was a child star, or maybe he's just talking out of his ass because he's completely delusional. You can't really trust him. And I feel like a lot of people do write these situations off as a simple cut and dry, oh, bad person. He do drug, that equal bad person. He go crazy, equal bad person. But in reality, I feel like a lot of these cases, they're really just good people who dealt with years and years of child stardom that comes with abuse, manipulation, a life like no other child would really have, and then thrust into the real world and adulthood, ripped away from that stardom life with not much money, and then you're kind of just screwed. It's really hard to rule him out as a terrible person. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not excusing some of the actions he's done. He has done terrible things, like hitting his girlfriend, for example. A lot of the things he's done is inexcusable. But basically, all I'm saying with this is maybe we should stop for a second and realize that, oh, maybe it's not the actor's fault. Maybe they're not bad people. Maybe they just got dealt a bad hand and dealt with some shitty corporations and a lot of abuse and were treated like livestock most of their lives. And then we have new out that's coming to feast on the downfall of their life as we all watch and laugh as their life falls apart. Where all of these people are giving cries for help, we tend to just kind of laugh at them and be like, ha, what a complete idiot, dumb celebrity, you know? Which don't get me wrong, some celebrities do suck. Some celebrities don't deserve our support or care. 
but I'm just saying some instances aren't as black and white as they seem. But thank you everyone for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more videos like this, please make sure to kiss the like button with your penis tip. You want to say anything? No? Now that I ask you to speak, you, nothing? Bye.